The observant among you may be wondering why a video has recently disappeared from my channel. Yesterday I uploaded a trailer reaction to the recently released trailer for Ready Player One, the movie adaptation of the book of the same name. The reason that that video is gone is because it was garbage and it's now been put into the dumpster fire of the delete button. I apologise for releasing substandard content if any of you watched it and if you didn't, well... Look forward to me re-uploading a new version soon that's got a lot more effort put into it and is actually up to standards. So, until then, let's do a mediocre book review. Today we're going to be talking about Proxima by Stephen Baxter. This is the book by Stephen Baxter, who was a frequent collaborator with late author Terry Pratchett. This is a galaxy-spanning epic telling the story of a group of humans who are put into an experimental spaceship, jettisoned across the galaxy, and forced to stay on a planet that is apparently habitable, and forced to settle it before the Chinese can get there. Um, it's basically the story of how this group of people has to survive um, in the strange wilderness of an uncharted planet, with nothing but their wits and a robot that can make burgers out of like pretend grass and all of that stuff. Whilst that's going on, there's a research scientist called Steph Kalinsky and she gets involved with a meddling AI on Earth and an old Australian businessman and there's like alien technology and it's all pretty crazy. Um, it ends in a cliffhanger that's like the most ridiculous thing I've ever read in my life um, and it's incredibly disappointing and frustrating because it has so many things that could have been really good and it, and then it wasted them it wasted them and flushed them down the literary toilet so before we talk about those things let's talk about what's good as always i've got my little talking points over there in the corner so do forgive me if you see me glancing over and i'm not going to hold up the book anymore because it's really weird and distracts from my amazing face now let's talk about the good things the setting is really cool this is a really cool idea for a book okay like the the whole reason i picked this up is because it sounds really cool. Um, so basically, you've got your humans. They've spread out across Earth. Um, they've spread out across Earth in what was known as the heroic generation, where people... It was basically today. And basically, people fucked everything up. We made crazy science experiments. Like, our main character, who's called Yuri, um, Yuri Eden, he's been frozen uh, in the in the heroic generation, cryogenically frozen and then unfrozen 160 years later to live on Mars before he's catapulted across the universe for being a criminal. Um, so yeah, that happens. Um, it's a really cool setting. Like the, basically the humanity spread out amongst our own solar system. We've colonized Mercury. We've colonized Mars. We're not, I don't think we've done the other planets. There's like that, comes a small plot point later um, but basically we're doing all right for ourselves and now we're looking out to the stars and how we're going to get there and that's all propelled by the discovery of a new technology called kernels which is a pretty cool idea it's basically a standard science fiction mega science where we discover something really cool that lets us do things that are also really cool so those are really cool things and um, like that's the, the sort of the key word um, to use with the good things about this book a lot of it's really cool um, like there's AIs in bunkers on the earth that's pretty cool um, you know there's spaceships and those are always cool like things are always cool there's like a Chinese guy um, who's really cool as well he's like the only good character um, and that <laughs> brings up some of the bad points the characters are not very good um, but let's stay let's stay focused on the good um, pretty much it's all kind of plausible actually um, until you get to some of the more extreme convenient sciences, like there's some classic science fiction tropes in there that do lend themselves to being a little bit um, contrived. But for the most part, it's all very plausible. I think Stephen Baxter's main career was as an engineer um, before he became a novelist. So a lot of it makes a lot of sense. It all seems very grounded and thought out. So I could believe that the things that I was reading about could happen. Um, so that was good. Um, there was also a lot of good setups for plot lines going out towards for the series going onwards. This is already um, a duology. There's a sequel called Ultima. I don't know if it's staying a duology, 
or if it's going to have an, a third one, or if it's going to be like an ongoing series or whatever. Um, the other idea that was really cool uh, was that there was a, it was multi generational because um, obviously the story is they have to settle this planet um, with just the handful of colonists that there are, which means they have to populate the damn planet, um, which means we do get a lot of time jumping going on. Um, so we start as Steph Kalinsky is our secondary protagonist. She's like a little girl and it ends when she's in like her 70s or something. Um, so a lot of stuff happens there. There's a lot of scope uh, for things to grow and change and develop. And unfortunately, nothing fucking does. Um, so let's talk about the bad points because there are more of those. Um, so the characters are absolutely awful. They're all all of them to a man are just utterly weak characters. Um, there's there's nothing going on with any of them. Uh, all of them are stereotypes or something. Like you've got one guy, he's like, oh, I'm a businessman. He's like, he's just a big corrupt business guy. And then you've got an AI who obviously is a scheming, malevolent politica. Um, you've got Yuri Eden, who's just like a dull, um, he's just a guy. And like, he doesn't, have a motive and that's the big problem with all of the characters they don't have a proper motive um like steph kalinsky her motive is stated as that i want to find out about the kernels like okay i get it like i get you you want to research these things but it doesn't really lead anywhere <laughs> um because like what do you want to know like what do you want to know about them is that's like me saying my motivation for this novel is I want to know everything there is to know about gravity. But like, where does that end? What's the goal? How does that influence her as a character? Answer is it doesn't. Uh, and that's the problem. So she's very flat. Uh, there is like a weird development that happens with her later on that gives her some character stuff. Um, but now that she's an old lady, I don't. at the end of the book, I don't know if that's going anywhere. Um, but then you've got Yuri Eden... Uh, and the other survivors, uh, well, the other survivors, like the settlers, like you've got the settlers of the planet. Um, their problem is they don't want to be there. <laughs> um, like they don't want to be there, so there's no motive for them to do to do anything. Um, it's set up right from the start that there's no way for them to escape. So really, they don't do anything. You know, um, they don't do anything. <laughs> Uh, Yuri Eden, he's there, and he's like, so what do you want to do with your life, Yuri? Like, I don't know, I'm just on this planet, there's nothing to do, I'll grow up and make a farm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not, he doesn't have a goal, he doesn't have an ambition. Um, there's some stuff that's set up with him that I think is going to go and pay off in the later novels, but this leads to like another, the like one of my big issues, and this is the one that I think is really unforgivable. Um, it probably, Stephen Baxter probably knew this was going to series, um, and that's a detriment in all things. Um, unless your uh, your first book is really, really solid and makes you like want to read the second one, definitely, that's really dangerous because people will go for the first thing in a series, and if it's not good uh, or it doesn't satisfy them, they won't read the next one. So if you're sort of halfway setting things up and you're like, well, in the next one, all of that gets paid off, like. Yeah, okay, man, but, like, I don't want to read it, because the first one wasn't very good. Um, like, you'll see this in the, like, the original Star Wars film, for example. Um, there are no loose plot threads in that film. There are none. Um, the only thing that's, that's like, a maybe a bit of a loose plot thread is, like, Darth Vader is still technically not dead, because his TIE fighter flies away. But if there was never a Star Wars 2, if Empire Strikes Back never happened... That'd be an all right film still, because you could just say, well, yeah, Vader's ship went, it flew off into space and he's dead. He's just dead in space. Um, so, you know, it had a lot of payoff. There was a medal ceremony, all that stuff. So there's a lot of payoff in that first installment. And then in the second one, when the series had become popular, that's when it had things that were left hanging for the, for the third film. Um, this is, in this case, in the case of Proxima, um, loads of stuff got set up. And absolutely none of it got paid off. And that's really bad. That's really bad. It annoyed me. Um, it frustrated me. And I, I don't want to read the second one. And that means I'll never know. I will literally never know what happens to these characters. Now, 
let's talk about the writing style <laughs> because the writing style is a very big reason why none of these things are forgivable for me because it wasn't very engaging Stephen Baxter I'm sure is a very intelligent person I'm sure he's very good like he's he's like, okay at writing things like I, I his style's not terrible that's the worst thing like his actual prose style isn't really bad um, the problem is with his storytelling abilities and mainly with exposition there are so many conversations in this book between two characters that start with the equivalent of as you know and oh my god like it's about every little thing as well that, that's what annoys me there's no sense of mystery and ex exploration in a book about mystery and exploration because they don't let you explore anything they don't let you think for yourself um like they've got this thing with them uh, it's called a colonization unit it's basically a robot um and every single thing that that Yuri finds, they get the damned robots like, oh yeah, let me tell you about that, just for fucking ten pages. Like, it's not ten pages, but you get the point. Like, it's like a half a page of just an explanation about what this is. Um, really boring. Like, really boring, really disruptive to the narrative flow. Um, happens a lot with other characters as well. Like, there's a part where Steph Kalinsky is talking to another scientist. And this is like an, an esteemed scientist that worked with her dad. And the, the, the shit, Steph's just like, well, as you know, blah, 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 about this scientific field that you research for a living. And she's like, yes, I did know that. And she's like, what? <laughs> like, okay, like, I get it. Like, as a reader, I need to know this information. There's a much more natural way, I'm sure, that you could have put it in. Um, and that was awful. And that really upset me. Um, it's not good. Like, the characters are boring. They say boring stuff. Like, they don't have a good... Well, they don't have good voice. Like, none of them. They all sort of blend together. Um, especially the villains. Like, the antagonists. Um, like, especially early on. Are just, like, one-dimensional bully characters. And he's like, I'm a bully. I'm a bully. And I hate you. And he's like, why do you hate him? I don't know. Like, <laughs> literally, they don't know. Like, he's this guy, like, the main character is woken up out of fucking nowhere and put on this ship. And, like, immediately everyone's like, you're a fucking dick. I hate you. I'm going like, to murder you. Like, what? Where does this come from? Like, it just comes out of nowhere. It's really bad. Um, and that's that's really all I have to say. Like, it's uh, it, it's got so many good ideas. Like, that's what's so annoying about it. There's so many good nuggets of ideas that this could have become something brilliant it could have been fantastic the sequel might fix all of it and it'll be amazing but i'll never know because the first one was pants and now i'm not gonna read the next one or the one after that so for now i'm done with proxima by stephen baxter i can't say i'd recommend going to pick it up but this isn't a show all about gushing about our favourite things. It's a show about telling you what you should and shouldn't be reading. Because I am, in fact, the ultimate authority on that. So until I tell you what to read next, go away. Shh. Come here. Come here. Come closer. It's just, it's just me and you talking now. The end of that video that you just saw was a joke. I don't want you to go away. I, actually, I couldn't stand it if you left me. Um, it's quite embarrassing to admit this, but um, without subscribers, I'm nothing. Um, so do subscribe, do like, um, and obviously tell me how brilliant I am in the comments because um, it's the only way I can feel joy. So that'd be nice. Thanks. <laughs>